I'm on no sleep. No sleep. You look a little stressed. Oh, I'm stressed. I was wondering if anybody out there is having trouble sleeping. I have been having a lot of trouble sleeping over the last month or so. I mean, it's gotten uh, beyond the point of ridiculous. You know, maybe get a couple hours a night. If I'm lucky, just get up and I'm tired, but I can't sleep. And then I bump into my family member, my kid. What are you doing? Oh, I can't sleep either, Dad. What? Suddenly everybody's awake. I have my neighbors. They've been talking about it. I've had friends, uh, acquaintances. And so I just find that very strange. I have a theory why. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But doing a little research here on it. And I came across this article by AP. So, you know, I mean, whatever, right? But there were some things in this article very interesting, right? Not not intended for the normal reader to be interested. You know how sometimes, like, the news, they put stuff out there, right? I mean, lies, 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 misconception or misdirect and all this stuff, and more lies and nonsense. And then every now and again, they, like, slip some stuff in there, kind of like, I don't know, truth hidden in plain sight kind of things. And, uh, you know, you wonder, why would they even do that? You know, are they, are they trying to, what are they up to? But, this article had a bunch of stuff, and I thought it was kind of kind of interesting. You know, it was talking about the pandemic sabotaging sleep, but it's about nightmares. People having nightmares, and I'm not having nightmares. First of all, I'm not really scared. I don't really care. You know, I hope the grocery stores don't run out of food, but, you know, I don't know. And um, in order to have a nightmare, you got to be asleep. So I'm not having this problem. But the article written by uh, Jillian Flaccus, double L, double C, and we'll come back to that over and over, right? But anyway, the article talks about all these people dealing with the pandemic. Oh, they can't get relief even from sleep, you know, because now they're, you know, they're having nightmares, right? The surreal and frightening ways the pandemic has upended daily life. Now, I mean, I can understand having dreams about like um, losing my job. Well, not me. But if someone had like a real job and they am dependent on it or, you know, um, something like that, yeah, that would make, or the grocery store being empty, that, yeah, that would be a definite, a definite nightmare. But, you know, they're talking about all this other stuff. I mean, check this out, right? So they talk about everyone from a college teacher in Pakistan, what? <laughs> you know, to a, a mall cashier in Canada to an Episcopalian priest in Florida, right? They're all confronting the same daytime demon. Each is waking up in a sweat in the dead of night. I'm like, wait a minute. What do you mean they're confronting the daytime? I thought they were confronting, you know, nightmares, being woken up. What do you mean a daytime demon, DD? It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, the virus is day and night. It's all time. You know, that's a demon that never sleeps if it's, you know, if, well, whatever. So already I'm like, I don't even understand what this what they're even getting at here. I mean, they're talking about something, but I don't really know. But here's where it got interesting. Here's where I'm like, oh, man, there, maybe there's something here. I'm trying not to sound sarcastic, by the way. I, I think I have trouble not <laughs> sounding sarcastic. Experts say humanity has rarely experienced collective dreaming on such a broad scale in recorded history. And I'm like, wait a minute, what collective dreaming? So, I mean, it's rare, but it, it is experienced. It, it has happened on a worldwide scale. And I'm like, I've never heard of that. And of course, typical, you know, no, no footnote, no, no uh, example. Like, what do you mean? If this is like a rare thing, collective dreaming on a global, a global, right? On, on a global scale, why wouldn't you like, you know, mention that, you know, rarely experienced, like, you know, back in 19... You know, uh, 73, you know, or something. Like, why wouldn't they, like, explain or, 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 or do anything? Very disappointing. And I'm thinking, no, 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 no. There, there, there's no collective. I mean, my first thought was, like, you know what? Maybe there is, like, a great spiritual awakening that could take place, right? And I'm not talking about religion. Okay, you know, I'm not talking about religion. I mean, take religion and throw it into the ocean, right? I don't even want to do the ocean justice. So, oh, here we go. Take religion and send it to space. 
You know what I mean? Put it in a rocket and send it to space. You get it? You know, I don't want to do injustice to the ocean. You know, I like the ocean. It's real. Oh, but let's send it. Okay, anyway. So, um, I don't think it's really possible for there to be like a globe, you know, a, a worldwide sort of uh, awakening based on, you know, the article, you know, with what they're talking about. Because there are too few people that have antennas on their head, you know, that, are, that, that have their ears open, that have their eyes open, that are asking questions. You know what I mean? It's just too few. I mean, those would be the people that would have like a collective dream on a spiritual sort of, you know what I mean? Um, everybody else who's, I think, is the intended recipient of this article, would they have like some sort of collective dream? I would say yes, but that would be programmed. You see the difference there? Like this tiny little percentage of the world population, I could see them being in tune with the great force of, uh, of, of whatever, the creative, creative creator thing, you know, like a real thing, seeing through the matrix kind of thing, where 99.9% of everyone else is just sort of like plugged in and they're just feeding the fear. They're having nightmares and because they've just watched too much TV. So they're very, they're similar, but they're very, very different. So when they talk about collective dreaming, I think they're talking about, you know, the program that the overwhelming majority of people are sharing, not because they're connected spiritually, let's put it that way, but they're connected um, in the system, like as inmates. They're locked in the prism, and therefore they're just all reacting to the same thing. Uh, with fear and trembling. But it's unfortunate there was never any examples. I mean, I, I would like to have known more. If there was like a collective dreaming that took place 100 years ago, that to me would be very significant. But then again, I mean, I don't know how far back you can go in history and really have confidence that what you're reading is real. And I've already talked about the Civil War, and I, I have some really... Uh, big questions about that so anyway it's unfortunate no no examples but what do you expect now anyway the article goes on right it's talking about uh you know the psychological toll is staggering i don't like no look at gg you know and uh we got deidre barrett you know double r double t a harvard professor and she's going to do all this uh uh surveying 2,400 people, and we'll, and we'll get some samples of their dreams, and da 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 right? And as we get into this study, you know, of course, we're talking about, you know, this word up here, right? Starts with a pan, ends with a demic. Uh, well, we got to talk about 1918, because that's just what you got to do, right? You got to talk about social distancing, you got to say it properly, and you got to talk about the Spanish flu, right? Um, the Spanish flu... You never before has it, has it, you know, it's so popular now. It must be like just so proud and so happy that, you know, it's been like pulled off the dusty shelves. No one ever cared to read about the Spanish flu. And now it's like history's number one topic, making a comeback. Really proud of you, SF. Nicely done. Glad you're back in the limelight. So anyway, um, no one was recording their dreams from back then. Uh, but... But now we all, we all have smartphones by our bed. I mean, it's a strange sentence. Now we just all have our smartphones by our bed so we can reach over and just speak it or type it. You know what I mean? And this, to me, is what I think is going on. I, I've talked about that whole 5G thing. You know, there, there used to be opposition to 5G. And by the way, I bet 5G is like 50G. I bet they're so far ahead. I bet our smart devices all have the potential to do a lot more than we really think, you know, receive this and send that, all these microwaves or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't trust any of it. But I think that's my problem. And then, you know, what's going on is, you know, 
there's too many waves floating around, and you, know, you never know really what these things are doing, sending out signals all night. Like, what kind of signals are they sending out? You know, is my phone sitting there? Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, he's awake. Oh, we got him. Now he'll never get back to sleep, right? And then he'll be wrecked tomorrow morning, and then he'll be like, irritable. Hey, let's get the whole world. They're already afraid. Let's wake them all up. You know, and keep them irritable and, and, and angry. And, uh, yeah, that'll just help, like, stir that pot. How many friendships can we destroy this month, you know, with this whole thing? And then, you know, wake up, wake up. So I think it has something to do with that. And I was thinking about the cell phone. I mean, if you were to, like, go to a group of people or just go to one person, really, and, and, and even just put out the idea, hey, let's, um, or why don't you not sleep in the same room with your phone. You know, turn your phone off all the way, which you really can't do, you know that, right? Turn your phone off all the way and put it in another room and then go to sleep. How many people would like almost like react in horror over such a ridiculous, how, no way, I'd never make it. Oh, I got my alarm. Well, get a regular alarm clock. You'll you'll get up on time. What do you need your phone for? Well, someone might try to call. You know, it's like, it's not only we're glued to them during the day, which is bad enough, which is bad enough, but we're glued to them when we're sleeping. You know, oh, I got to have my phone near my bed. The last thing I look at, the first thing I'm going to get up. It's really strange to me. But anyway, so... We all have our cell phones there. This is what I think is really going on. And this is just more proof to me that you know, we're in the virtual prison. I mean, it's just it's a prison like you can't even comprehend it. I don't even want to like investigate it. I've thought about like kind of like going down that hole a little bit in that rabbit hole. I don't even want to know. I mean, I, I don't want to know. It, it's probably so thorough and so like intrusive. I would just prefer to just ignore it. I mean, I know that they're watching everything I do and listening to every word I say. So I'll just leave it at that. Now anyway, this article goes on and we we find out that there's a professor, right? Kathy Carruth from Cornell. Like at the CC going on here. And um, she's been studying this and uh, she's comparing what's going on to the you know the the experience of Hiroshima survivors, right? Pandemic dreams are reminiscent of the experience of Hiroshima survivors. I <laughs> Wait a minute. Now I'm I wasn't there. I didn't I didn't live through it. But let's just say, you know, it is what they say it was. You you're gonna you're gonna compare. I mean, this is this is impossible. Anyway, and you know they worried about invisible radiation. Oh, when we worry about invisible uh, virus, I guess you know, and also the nightmares of Vietnam veterans. VV. What, what, Agent Orange? What were they What were they worried about? You know, they were worried about getting shot, right, and falling on punji sticks or something. What invisible thing was coming after them? Oh, well, we don't want an Agent Orange drop. I mean, I don't know. It's just a very strange thing to bring that up. You could have brought up any war veteran. Uh, Gulf War Syndrome. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Thanksgiving Day Massacre. Oh, well, never mind. All right, so anyway, now let's go to the three people that were the uh, examples you know, we have the, uh, the teacher, the cashier, and the, and the priest. And so we'll start with the priest, who coincidentally is Mary Matheson, M.M., right? Now, <laughs> she had a dream. And this is like waking up, waking up in a sweat. Remember, that's how they described it all. Oh, my gosh. Waking up in the sweat, in the dead of night, right? These are night terrors. It's scary. Here's her dream. Uh, She dreamed of 500 people. They'd show up for a funeral in her church, and they wouldn't go home. (laughs) I just, I think I would be embarrassed to write that if I were the researcher. You know, like, what? This is your, oh, you don't understand, Doc. I, I, I go to bed at night, and I have this dream. Oh, what happened? Are zombies eating you? You know, your mother in law live with you? What, what is it? No, I dream I'm giving a funeral. And 500 people show up, and they won't leave my church. You know, and I'm thinking, like, uh, oh, a funeral. Do you know how much money funerals cost? If you haven't dealt with that, and you know what? I, I hope you don't for, for, for two reasons. One, I mean, we've had a couple, uh, well, anyway, funerals over the last year. 
and I, I can't believe I could I mean I'd heard I'd heard but I just couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the bill I was like I was outraged I was infuriated you know you can't even die for free and I told my kids right hey you, when I die you just grab my carcass and you throw it over the fence, right? And tell you, I don't know where he is. We don't know what happened to him. Yeah, he died and turned to dust. He just disappeared. He got raptured. He's, we don't know where, where dad went. It was just disgusting. So I don't know why Mary Matheson, you know, she's dreaming. This would be like a dream come true, you know, a funeral. Oh, that, this will be a big one, right? A big pricey one with a lot of people there. I mean, and then, I mean, I'm going to go off on a tangent. People sending flowers. Like, how much money? is spent on flowers, right? Oh, we're so sorry for your loss. Here's a bunch of useless flowers to take up space that you're going to have to throw away in a couple days, right? Oh, I couldn't make it. Hey, here's some flowers. Why don't you just send them the cash? What do you, what, where did this sending of flowers come from? I mean, I, I guess like when, the, well, I don't want to get into the gender thing. Just, what, here, here's the grieving widow. Oh, She's got nothing, and, you know, the husband is dead, and they, you know, hey, here's some flowers. Maybe money would be better. You know, I'm all alone. I, I don't have any food. It doesn't make any sense to me. I can't believe I never thought of that before. So, anyway, we got M.M. here in this horrible nightmare where, the, you know, the church is they're just cleaning up, making tons of money. Just a very strange dream to go you know, blabbering on about, oh, I can't sleep. Night terror. The, the funeral, they won't leave. Really? I mean, is that... All right, then we got this other one, the cashier, right? 24-year-old barista. You know, there are 2,400 people here. But this is the cashier, and what do we know about her, right? Ashley, right? So a few days later, she dreamed she and her girlfriend <laughs> were in line to enter a dark metal warehouse Ooh, where, they, uh, where they'd be injected with the new coronavirus by government workers wearing hazmat suits, right? They're, oh, this nightmare. We're going to get injected by the government, right? And the fluorescent lights are in the parking lot. Fluorescent lights in the parking lot. You know what I mean? Fluorescent lights are not in a parking lot. I mean, maybe it's talking about like, a, a, you know, one of those parking lot um, garage things. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking too much on it. Anyway, this eerie glow and it's just like, it's, it's just kind of silly. You know, and then, you know, she woke up whimpering and she immediately felt an impulse to share her nightmare with someone, anyone. And what did she do? What, did she share with her girlfriend? No, she goes and starts tweeting it. It's just, it's so typical. It's just exactly what you'd expect. I wake up, my phone's right there, and you blah, 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 blah. Everyone listen to me. Everyone listen. Look at me and listen. It's just absurd. Okay, so anyway, let's move on to the last contestant here. Um, who, oh, in Pakistan, Pakistan's Punjab province, PP, right? We got a college literature teacher, you know, and she, another female, so three females, you know, dreaming um, she was one of only 100 people left on the planet. Uh-huh. Um, you know what? I'm going to bring something up, okay? I'm going to go off here. I just, I was sort of interested in this person here, an Episcopalian priest. And I was just, I just wanted to do some research on this person. I don't know why. And there was, there was, there was some stuff there about her church and some strange pictures of her. Not what I was expecting at all. Not at all. But, I mean, what, whatever. I'm an old timer. But they had this thing on Wikipedia, and it had a list of people who had um, discovered planets, you know, or, or uh, interstellar bodies, you know, like asteroids or, or whatever, whatever you want to call them. And the name popped up, and I, I'm like, oh, that's the same name, right, United States? And I can't verify it's the same one. You know, I, I couldn't verify anything. I I was just thinking, if, if you discovered a planet, um, 
I don't know, that seems like it would be kind of big news. And you'd think that there'd be some, like, um, more mention. I, I'd be able to verify who this Mary Alice Matheson was. And there was zero. There was one thing about, like, a picture. Here's the name right here. But this isn't what she discovered. This is what some other guy discovered. And I don't know if it's the same one or not. It's, you know, maybe the name's not that uncommon. It was just a very strange kind of, like, detour when I was looking you know, is this the same woman who's an Episcopalian priest who's also like a part-time astronomer on the side? I, I don't know. I, I, I doubt it, but it was just such a dead end. I just would have thought like anybody who discovered, uh, you know, a minor planet, you know, there'd just be some stuff. You'd be able to go, you know, if, if it was someone that was current. And of course, when I found, you know, the name and I, what I was looking for, I wanted to find out what her age was. I think, I bet she's 33. That's what I was thinking. I, and I wanted to... Um, you know, verify that. And where did she go? Here she is. And of course, the date of birth, there's no date of birth here, and I couldn't find the other one. So, all right. Anyway, I digress out of that. So, anyway, we're, we're on to um, Pakistan's Punjab province professor. Um, and what's this guy? Roha Rahi. Okay, so this is a female. Roha. Rafiq, again, right? It's got the uh, the double R's going, the double P's. Everything's double, it seems. It's very strange. And um, and what was this one? This, this person thought um, uh, terrified the infected population. Oh, yeah, one of 100 people left on the planet. All right, so here's you got your uh, your dystopian novel, you know, running away. No one's worried about losing their job. <laughs> you know what I mean? No one's worried about – she's worried about her elderly father – who insists on going to prayers every day despite the stay at home I don't know it's just uh, it's just it's just more ridiculousness here it's sort of like um I guess the whole point man I'm not gonna bother with this the whole point when I came to this article was about not sleeping and then they're talking about this worldwide connection that people have they're all sharing these problems and um I don't know if these are actual problems that people are having, but it's sort of like um, if you were to have some sort of sleeping thing and you woke up, you read that, you'd be like, oh, okay. Oh, that would just explain it. Oh, I'm just stressed out about the environment, what's going on. So it just, if you just happen to be somehow like with your antennas partially up, like anyone here at this channel, is antennas are up, right? I mean, you know what I mean. But if there are people that like say have a partial antenna, and it's getting a little signal, then they'll just read this and be like, oh, yeah, I'm just worried about the, uh, you know, the whole thing going on. It's, it's nothing, right? Everyone just sort of like, oh, yeah, it's just like, oh, uh, oh, what did my dreams mean? Oh, I've been dealing with a lot of stress, you know, as opposed to really considering the possibility that dreams and, and these kinds of things are much, much more significant and important then, you know, we oh, it's just a dream. Oh, I had a nightmare. Oh, that's over. It's, it was only a dream. When, when it's very possible that the dream world or whatever you want to call it is just as real as this one, if not more. I mean, you don't know. I don't know. I can't prove anything. Neither can you. But to just sort of like, you know, make a blanket statement, oh, it's just a disease. It's scary. Oh, you're just stressed. Don't even think about it. Put that out of your mind. They really don't want you thinking about that stuff. And so, you know, that was sort of the point of this whole article. But they did have some things in here. I mean, I bet there's something to this, right? I bet this isn't just some big fat lie. I bet there's something here. And they just want people to think that, oh, yeah, you know, uh, we don't want to tell anybody. But it's, it's just because everyone's afraid. And they're on edge. And they're stressed. And a little bit worried about Grandpa. And, and you know, uh you having, you know, really scary nightmares locked in your church with all that money and all those tombstones and whatever else and flowers and, and whatnot. But anyway, that, that's it. That was on my mind. Uh, yeah, but I'd be interested if you're feeling like uh, you can't sleep or you're, if, you're, if you're noticing something, something different. That's kind of what would interest me, you know, uh, you know, community or, you know, people that are sort of like, you know, on the fringe or outside of the system, at least mentally. I mean, physically, we're all locked in. I understand that. But um, this is a pretty big deal. Not, not so much the actual disease, but just sort of the, um, 
just sort of the impact on the uh, psyche and maybe the um, you know the emotional the emotions of, of humanity it's sort of taking its toll so if you experience something I'd kind of be interested in hearing about that but anyway that's it all right that's all I got the end.